Hello there everybody, this is Alex from Hardcore and Guys bringing my guide for Dead Space on Impossible Difficulty. Today we are doing Chapter 11 entitled Alternate Solutions. This is going to be the chapter where we're finally going to deal with the marker firsthand, and we're going to have to do the whole, like, carrying it across the bridge platform. But then of course in Chapter 12, we're going to have more of the marker stuff, but it's going to be a different part of the marker section. So I guess um, running through this door, the exploder is just going to not even bother with trying to explode us, but just be careful that he's right there and that you could probably end up getting killed on accident. So just be wary of that. That's a, a first bad spawn, but, you know, I got lucky or just he didn't care. Either that or he just couldn't do anything about it anyway, so. Now, granted, with exploders, you know, they usually have to go out of the way to try to kill you in order for you to die, but if you were to shoot the you know, exploding pod, then you would probably die from that, of course, I would assume. Because, you know, that's just dead space for you. And something else is, again, I can't go one video without mentioning it, but just for those that are curious, if you're looking for the ping trophy, as in, like, the ping thing, you know, or whatever, achievement trophy... On the remake, it's right here to my left. But this is not the remake. This is Death Space 1. At Death Space 1, it's actually near the main transport area. Basically where we came from uh, on the Ishimura the first time. So, And I will, of course, get that and show that to you guys, too. So don't worry about that. If those, if, if you haven't found the paying trophy by now... But granted, if you're playing in boss mode, you might have already found it, possibly. So, But then again, maybe not, because... You know, maybe you want to wait to impossible mode and be like, hmm, I want to get that then so that I get, like, a ton of money from it. So, yeah, over here would be on the remake where it's at now for some reason. I don't know why they changed it. And they make it so damn clear, too, because, like, they have a sign that literally says you you can do what you can't do without paying or something like that. But that's like, really, guys? <laughs> I don't know why they moved it, though. I don't, I don't get it. I don't get what the point was, but eh, it's okay. Maybe because of the zero gravity, that's probably why. Because, like, you do go back to that area um, later with zero gravity and everything. But even then, still, you zero gravity in this game, too. In the same area. So, I don't know. So, yeah. Uh, of course, the hive mind is going to have his little tentacles kind of just, you know, reaching around and trying to grab you and try to stop you from moving the marker. And then enemies are going to spawn. And what have you. Um, when it comes to enemy spawns, I'm not 100% sure on where they spawn. But I do know that once you start moving the marker the first time, they're going to start spawning in from, like, as you can see, like, across the way. And I always just try to stay near the elevator, so that way I can kind of just, you know, cheese them out a little bit and make them, like, get off me if I need to. Or just be able to get away. Even if you were to take the elevator back up, they can spawn back up there in the vent, and they can come for you. So just be careful of that, unless I'm getting the games mixed up again, but... For the most part, um, I use Force Gun. You know, once again, this is for people that um, haven't kept up with the guide or are new to the guide or whatever. If you're watching for the chapter-specific thing, then yeah. Uh, also, pregnants around this area are mostly going to spawn lurkers. They're not going to spawn swarmers at this point, so feel free to do whatever you want to a pregnant. And I usually use a Force Gun on a pregnant just in case because it typically makes it to where they don't explode. But that can happen uh, no matter what still, so yeah. I don't know why the Exploder was walking all the way over there. It makes no sense. Now, when it comes to taking out the Hive Mind Tentacles, th this one's kind of a bit more tricky, too, because I don't have any realistic way of taking them out. Now, I do have one piece of tip that I can give. If you make the Tentacle spawn and you make it swipe down, like right there, you could take that chance to just kind of shoot at it and get some damage on it. And if you're also running out of ammo by this point, I would also recommend you going back. Whenever you get some kills, uh, going back and then, you know, buying more ammo. Now, do I recommend taking out the tentacles? Like, yeah, technically, of course. Uh, you don't have to. You can kind of get away. Like, if you know, like, when they're going to swipe down, you know when they're going to attack you, you could theoretically get away with just making it to where... You could move the marker without them really hitting you. And, of course, uh, as well, if you have Kinesis Distance upgraded, if you have the distance for the kine uh, Kinesis upgraded, then you can, you know, grab the marker from, like, a far distance and then just kind of just move it that way and sometimes avoid some of the tentacles. 
you could probably theoretically avoid most of the bridge, like taking it across that bridge section uh, if you wanted to. But, you know, if you also want to take down the tentacles too, just be on the safe side, I don't blame you. But, like I said, my best advice for taking down a tentacle is just to kind of wait for it to slam. Like, get out just far enough to where... Stand out far enough in front of it just to where, like, you know it's going to do it. Uh, and the way to tell if it's going to slam is you kind of have to, like, pay attention. Like, right there. That's when it's pretty much going to slam. Like, when you see that little animation of it kind of, like, slowly curling its head back. Or whatever you want to call it. Um, when it kind of just, like... It, it, it moves a bit more slow and less jerky. That's when you kind of notice that, okay, it's about to, it's about to slam. And, of course, when you're making it across your way across the bridge, uh, that's when more enemies are going to spawn. So just immediately check to your right and left and make sure that nobody is going to try to attack you. And, of course, um, this isn't exactly, per you know, perfect. Like, you saw the first super that I fought earlier. He ran away when I got to the elevator, but this doesn't necessarily happen all the time. That's not a, a perfect cheese. It just kind of just sometimes works, sometimes doesn't. It really kind of just depends on, I guess, how the game feels. But yeah, this is what I meant by, even if you are to get away from them or go away from the elevator, then go off the elevator, they would still spawn up here. However, you could use this to your advantage too. You can't use this to your advantage. You can just get away from like the hectic amount of fights or just get away from getting surrounded just by going up here. And not only that, but just get them to kind of spawn out of this one vent that they just cannot get through. So, or they, that they can get through, but like, you know, they have nowhere else to come from. So they just end up kind of getting stuck and, and screwed over anyway. So that's something else you could try if you're feeling like it. And of course, if you run out of ammo, head back to the shop. You know, it's not that far back. You just head back through a couple of doors and you'll find it. It's not that bad. So... Use stasis whenever you feel like it. No big deal. By now, you probably have enough stasis packs on standby. If not, of course, there's the cheat code you can always input. Pause the game. Hit square, triangle, triangle, square, triangle, square. I think that's what the combination is for PlayStation, at least. And there you go. And now you have your cheat code. Look them up. Uh, so, again, I'm going to make my way across. And I'm just going to use the advantage that I found out. Actually, during this, funny enough, this was during... This, this is what you call character development, what, while you're watching me play a guide, and you're like, oh, he's actually figuring out the game as he plays. That's impressive, but some people are like, no, that's not, because he's, he should have just known what to do by that point, and it's like, okay, yeah, that's fair, but, I don't know, I guess that's something else you could say that maybe makes my guides unique, is I'm kind of just figuring things out as I go sometimes. Honestly, right there, I'm not gonna lie, I thought I died. I, I thought the cutscene played, and I thought I died, and I was like, oh, fuck me. But yeah, even at a level 5 suit, with relatively high HP, you still take close to death damage, so I wouldn't bother with trying to, to sneak your way across without, you know, getting hit. I wouldn't really mess with the tentacles too much in terms of, like, pissing them off. I'd, I'd say, like, just, you know, get them to aggro for a bit, make them slam, and then shoot them, instead of just having to, like, try to run through and just hope that they don't hit you. I feel like it's more advantageous just to kind of, you know, get to that point where uh, you just take them down instead of having to deal with them. I don't, I, I'm pretty sure they don't respawn. I don't think they would. But of course, you know, upon getting the marker finalized, there's going to be more enemies that are going to spawn again. Because of course there is. But that's just how this fight works pretty much. It just works based on like checkpoints and stuff. And then Force Gun works wonders against Lurkers. Because they just can't do anything about it. Usually you can kind of like two-shot a lurker and he's just dead. Like right there. Like that's just a basic lurker of course. But even then still. Like a basic lurker just dies immediately. And then of course you know force gun works pretty well against pregnant. And just anybody really. Like realistically speaking it's a pretty damn good gun. It's definitely like a really uh, good gun to kind of have. I know people say the contact gun's really good too but... I never played with it enough. I just always kind of struggle with how long it takes to charge up. Even though technically I, I would assume you could probably upgrade the speed of it. But even then still, I've never messed with it too much in my playthroughs to really kind of deal with it. Same thing with Ripper. Although with Ripper, I found out that it actually is pretty damn effective against lurkers. In terms of like, not having to chop off their limbs. Because it seems to me like both the... And I would also assume the contact beam... 
Uh, the Ripper and the Force Gun are pretty damn good against Lurkers of just not having to cut off their limbs. Although, like, with anything else, it just feels like you kind of have to go for the tentacles. Although, you could chop off, like, a foot on, like, their normal body, but I just feel like it's too strong to chop off, you know? I feel like it's much easier to chop off a tentacle and get the two tentacles chopped off than it is just to deal with the entire actual physical body itself from the outside. Ah. Sorry, my nose is plugging up there. So <laughs> I don't know what's going on. After this, I think I'm just going to render these two videos and not record the last one just yet. I, I, I think I'm just going to leave that for another time. So these videos will probably get done by hopefully today. Today is, of course, March 19th. And I have to go back to my work tomorrow. I have to go back to work tomorrow. So... No more of these, uh, you know, quick, fast uploads, even though they don't really seem like they really are, truly. Uh, yeah, no more goofing off. I'm now finally off my quote-unquote, let's just call it vacation time. So, yeah. Uh, this room sucks ass. And my trick here is just force gun the hell out of pretty much everything. Or at the very least, just chop out their legs and deal with them as they come. There's no good hiding spot, really. Because if you were to stand at the door to where you're supposed to go to, they're just going to spawn in. But you can always do what I do and just, like, attack the first two supers, like, run toward them, and then run toward the door the, run toward the door we came from. and Because at least then you could, bomb, you could possibly get the super slasher to spawn toward the door that we're going to and just try to keep an eye on him. He's the main problem. The super slasher is, like, the main problem. They both are. They both suck. And they both, make the, they both make this fight really hard. I did die, actually, because I was stupid and got overwhelmed. But uh, a good spot to kind of, I guess you could say, have a view of is starting off, you know, you run to the door we need to go to and turn around, deal with, this, deal with the regular slashers, and immediately right after that, run toward where they came from and then just kind of shoot the rest of them. So here's the ping trophy for anybody that's wondering. I think it's... I think it's in-game an actual trophy. I think that's what it should be called, I believe. And then across the way on the left side here, you know, we have some things we can also pick up. You can also pick this up, too, and just kind of shoot it out. Uh, you can zero gravity this section to make yourself, you know, go... I, you should be able to go over here if needed, but, you know, I, I don't bother. I just grab the kinesis. just makes it much easier to deal with. So there's the, you know... The Ping Trophy, or whatever, however it's pronounced. I pronounce it Pang because I just assume that's what it's pronounced, but I don't, I don't know. Okay, so next part's kind of fun, and I actually do have a bit of a good spot to kind of hide in when it comes to taking down the first wave of enemies. So that's something I can actually finally be proud of in this guide for once. Then I can say, like, hey, I actually did pretty good here. Which I cannot wait till my next guide, my next full guide of a game. Because there was a spot that I also eventually found that was really effective for that difficulty mode as well. But that's for later, and this is now. So, alright. Zero gravity time. The only time that Isaac gets to jump in the entire game. Um, you know, once you grab the marker, lurkers are going to spawn. And I'm going to hide behind the marker itself. Because there's a ton of lurkers that just end up spawning. And... To me, hiding in this room makes it much more easier to kind of just get a good view on the lurkers and just get them all kind of cramped up and surrounded. Because they think they surround me, but realistically speaking, they, they don't. They, they're actually, they're technically the ones surrounded. Because when they're close enough to me, and I got force gun, it's just going to annihilate the shit out of them. So, this, this is the only first part of this area that I can argue that I think is a pretty good hiding spot. Because it's just a nice cramped room that, realistically, you know, these guys have to kind of, they have to go around the marker to even, like, get to you. So, you'll know where they're coming from pretty much at all times, practically. They, they can't, like, get behind you to scare you or anything like that. So, that's usually what I would consider an, adva an advantage in Dead Space, is whenever, like, you can get to a point where you can view where the enemies are spawning from and from that you know not only that but like they can't attack you from behind that's why i would argue is probably like the best spot 
to kind of just be at. In most, if not all, scenarios. That's 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 the ideal scenario, is to make sure that enemies cannot spawn behind you. Because after, you know, with that, you know, it's just like, well, just shoot them in the front. There you go. Like, <laughs> force gun them, you know? If they get too close, force gun, push them back. Contact beam secondary fire does the same thing. Hell, a firewall might even be effective, too. Come to think of it. Pulse Rifle I don't feel like does, but I've never played with the secondary fire enough to really say. So now I'm kind of curious if there's anybody out there that actually uses the Pulse Rifle secondary fire on OG Dead Space. I feel like there is. I, I feel like there's at least one person out there that can say, for a fact, that yeah, I do use Pulse Rifle secondary fire. And if you do, more power to you, because I don't know how effective that is honestly it never seems like it would be but it could be we all could just be under some weird spell and not know exactly what it does also of course you have all the explosive barrels around here so if you don't have force gun ammo or, or just any ammo at all really just use these to blow them up and do be careful though uh because once you get to like halfway the super leapers are going to spawn and they kind of spawn over near this little area so i just start running toward that way and get them to kind of group up and then just wail on them with explosives. If not that, then just, just, you know, stomp them out. Just stomp them in the nuts, you know? It's, as uh, Thug Dificent would say, stomp them in the nuts. And, let's see. I think that's close to all of them. I believe, like, after you get it either inside of the ship or close to the inside of the ship. I believe a couple more leapers and lurkers spawn. But for right now, they don't spawn too often. And, and, uh, and like the first wave of lurkers is not too difficult to deal with. It's like I said, when you're hiding that little that little small area, you can just kind of use that to your advantage to just not bother. Also, this is another case of like the game being kind of fucky. When I use Kinesis on something and then it just completely misses what I was trying to grab and I hate that. But that's just Dead Space games in general, it seems. Is they, no matter what Dead Space game it is, it always seems to have something wrong. There's always something that just happens. Either auto-aim just gets fucked or or whatever. By auto-aim, I mainly mean like uh, Isaac, the Kinesis auto-aim. And that's even a thing that I think um, when you throw an item in Dead Space Remake, whenever you throw something at somebody, it also has a very hard tracking for the auto-aim, and it just kind of fucks everything up, too. I love Remake, but Jesus Christ, it's got some issues. Exiting. So, yeah. After all said and done, uh, you know, click on the gravity, wait for the cutscenes, do all your fun stuff, and then now we're gonna start heading up here to Nicole's room. I'm just gonna show off me grabbing some of the items and, and what have you. Oh, I, first is, of course, the Guardian door. I forgot about that. Um, I forgot about it, just like when I was editing, too. I'm like, oh, yeah, that's right. And I just, you know, wail on it with Force Gun, do what you do with Guardians like you normally would. No big deal. And then Pods usually die in like one grenade shot from a Force Gun. They die in pretty much one shot no matter what the gun pretty much is, so... Yeah, just take out the Guardian as you yeah, as you see fit, because we're pretty much like ass end close to the end of the game anyway. At this point in time, I would assume, and have confidence by now... You know, you're this close to beating impossible mode. You've got this. Like, there's no way in hell, like, you pretty much don't have an idea of how to deal with most enemies. Now, granted, you know, when you're not, when you're fighting the hide mine, that's like the next, that's like the next next obstacle I can see probably being difficult. If not that, then maybe at least chapter 12 with the amount of enemies that spawn. But even then, still, um, I feel like most of the basic enemies have become kind of just. Well, just that they've just kind of become fodder, like basic enemies at this point. That there's just nothing to them. They can still kill you, of course. I mean, you know, that's just what they do. Their, their job is to kill you, but when it comes to a challenge, I don't feel like they're going to get much harder than anything they've been before. Especially considering the fact that they don't spawn too many, uh, you know, that do become too effective. They just, in the next chapter, especially this one, they just kind of spawn a lot. and It's like, it doesn't really change much. They're still about the same. And there's just plenty of ways to kind of just get around them and get away. And just kind of, you know, re regroup myself. And, uh, yeah. So, a couple of leapers are going to spawn. Wait for them to kind of get, like, close enough to where you can just stasis a couple at a time. And then, you know, melee or force or whatever. 
not too bad. There's just three of them. So, yeah, they're supers, but still, it's not not too bad, really. And then, yeah, that's uh, going to be the end of the chapter. So, I'll see you guys next time for chapter 12, which is going to be the final chapter of Dead Space 1. So, as always, take care, the right thing, everybody. We're together now. Nothing can stop us now.